Yahoo! It's Art Chat. Hello and welcome to Art Chats. And uh, I'm Lynn Chapman and this is John Burks. And we're going to talk to you about what we've been up to. It's been a bit longer than normal. Um, uh, I think it's been a month or it might even have been longer than that. Um, mainly because we've been waiting for John to finish the blooming painting that he showed you last time. <laughs> and he uh, usually rattles through them, but um, this one has taken, well, I don't know, about a month and a half, isn't it? Probably by the time she yes, started. Yes, 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 usually. So, um, yeah, so, so I've been holding on to, so that you could see the finished items. So, and you've been taking photographs, haven't you, as we went along? Yes. So we've got some of those that we can show things to you as well, so as you can see. You kept painting lumps out, didn't you? Yeah, well, <laughs> so, yeah the, the, paint, the, the paint must be that thick. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll come to that in a little while. Um, but first of all, I want to I want to show you the art hats that I've been doing. Um, I've actually not done any painting since before Christmas. Um, and I'm feeling a bit kind of guilty about that, really, because uh, I was on quite a roll before Christmas and you know what it's like when you stop it's uh yeah once you stop you, 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 it takes a while doesn't it to build up head of steam again so. yeah yeah you need to get onto a, onto a roll don't you yeah, yeah so I think because I've been enjoying the hats I thought well rather than try and do two things at once or swap backwards and forwards I thought I'd just like let it go and think, well, when I get back to the painting, I'll get back to the painting properly and I'll give it my all. Um, and then I'll probably find it easier to get back on the trajectory. But at the moment, I'm having a lot of fun with the plastic. So, hey, ho, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. still creative. At the end of the day, enjoying it, what matters? If you're, yeah. not, if you're not having fun and enjoying it, then really there's not a lot of point in my, in my opinion. No, it's true. So... The only thing I've done with my paintings, I've taken a few photographs. Um, I, I take them out, I find them to the garden, and we've got a windowsill that's um, it, it sort of, it's not in the sun, but it sort of faces enough into the light that you don't get direct sunlight, but it's reasonably bright. And, and I can sort of get it at eye level. I have to stand on a stepladder to get it at eye level, and I take photographs of my paintings on there. So I took advantage of a bright day and, and did a bit of that. But that's about the only contact I've had with my paintings. So, so without further ado, last time um, I, I had a look and I was a good way on with this little devil here. Uh, I hadn't completely finished it, um, but what I've done since you last saw it is basically build it up. So um, if, I, if I hold it a bit closer, can you see this? It's sort of... There's, there's levels, there's depth to it. It's, I think when I last showed it to you, it was more or less a single layer. And I, and I wasn't sure how far I'd got to go with it, but the more I added, the better it looked. So I just kept building it out. And I think it looks really good from underneath because you get this, this wonderful kind of view down. Spider's web. Yeah, and, and I don't know, I love the contrast between these textures and the textures in the middle um, and all the all the edges of all the uh, junctions are bound with these colored I'll get a bit closer again with these different colored threads and, and that is and I, I don't count them really then it took forever because of that there's a surprising amount of junctions in it but it's quite meditative I enjoyed doing it and I'm, I'm really really pleased with it and it's and it's quite a comfortable one actually it sits, it's, it's quite, here we go, duck down. <laughs> it's quite light because it's just cellophane. So there's, there's nothing to it. Um, so it sits quite comfortably on my head. So, so that I'm really, really pleased with. And I just love the slightly icy look to it. Um, so. Yeah, I don't, just before we finish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how well the camera will actually pick this up, but the way in which the light um, refracts and reflects on this uh, transparent plastic. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? It's really like, almost like ice. Yeah, it is. It? Yeah. So it's 
So beautiful. Yeah, and the uh, I like the fact that when you twist the cellophane, you get these slightly random kind of shapes that it creates. So it's I, I'm a big fan of randomness, as I've said before. So I, I like the fact that it's you're not entirely in control of what you get. It just yeah. It just builds gradually. So it's been really good fun. I've really enjoyed that one and I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, so when I finished it, I think the next one I did, because John took such a long time, I've had plenty of time to work, um, was this one. And for a long, long time, I've been thinking about how much, unfortunately, since COVID, people are using takeaway um, drink and food cartons so much more than they were so there's again there's even more plastic pollution out there and these blooming coffee tops from, from takeaway cafe drinks are everywhere and so i've been collecting them i think in case you can't see quite what i'm talking about you know these things um i've been collecting them for a while now uh, particularly for my local cafe uh, so if, if I go there and get a drink, <laughs> collect them off of everybody. Uh, so I thought, right, what can I do with them? And I found that if I if I chopped them, chopped into them in a few places. So I'm going to hold that up again. So if you chopped into them in three places, um, and then again, so you divide them into six around the edges and just fold them in, you get this kind of almost flowery kind of effect. So I thought, right, okay, I'll make flowers out of them to decorate the next pack. So I started to do that and I thought that I might decorate them just with thread, but it was very quickly evident that they, they needed more colour. So I got my milk bottle tops out again and uh, I had to raid some more recycle bins to get different colours again. And, um, and I did the same with the milk bottle tops so that, again, let's come in, you can see I've chopped into the, the cap, into the top, and bent it in on itself. So you get a similar petal effect. So I sewed them inside the coffee tops. And then I had these ugly sensors in there when I was trying to attach them to the frame, the, the wire frame that's underneath. And so I thought, well, what can I do with that? And I toyed with beads and things. And I thought, well, that's no, kind of off subject, really. I don't want really to go and buy beads. So I happened to have a new pack of tea bags. And they came in this silver cellophane stuff, which again is horrible for the environment. You can't recycle it. So I cut little squares of that to put in the centre and that's quite nice because it, it you get these little glints so it's quite understated but it just is slightly reflective as it as you move it so I was very pleased with that and I didn't bind the uh, wire on this one because I wanted it to disappear between the flowers and I did quite a lot of it and then I realised again it was a bit boring it was just up and down and that was when I decided it needed a more three-dimensional element to it. So I took off all the flowers that I'd attached, and they're all attached with little wire twists. And I built these sort of fly-outs, which were bound with the, the vegetable sack um, stuff that I've used usually to bind the frames. And it, again, that just created the contrasting texture that I needed. And I think that really finishes it off beautifully. And it means that as you move it around, you get a changing shape rather than a constant, which then is visually quite dull. So, yeah, I was again, I'm really pleased with how that has, that's turned out. I think. Uh, Let's see it on then. Okay, let me. This one's a bit heavier. It's amazing how the cumulative effect <sighs> of something that appears to weigh nothing you know gradually builds it up so again this is fairly this is fairly comfortable but it is a lot heavier so i can't get down into shot <laughs> but yeah so yeah it's got a bit more of a wobble factor you you definitely be great for posture training actually because you have to keep 
Yeah. Your head in exactly the right position. Goes well with your glasses, actually. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, coloured. Yes, attention to detail. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, oh, that's number. Oh, careful, careful, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's number seven that I've done. So they're mounting up. And then I've just started a new one. Um, I don't know, a week or so ago. And this one's going a bit quicker than usual. And uh, basically, because I uh, I put on Facebook that I'd run out of green bottle tops because we usually have skimmed milk and we just have the occasional um, semi. I have mainly red ones and not a lot of green ones. So uh, <laughs> I, when I was doing the roses, I said, uh, put on Facebook, if I've got any neighbours who use more semi-skimmed, can I have your green tops? And <laughs> somebody came round with a carrier bag full of bottle tops, most of which were the green ones. So I then got tons and tons of bottle tops. So I thought, right, okay, I better try and find a use for all of these because I used a few that I needed for that and there was still uh, most of the carry bag left. So I thought, right, how can I use them again in a different way? So <clears throat> I thought, well, I'll, I'll stitch the centers of them this time says that I'm attaching them in a slightly different way and not cut into them. So they are what they are. <clears throat> and I was trying to find ways to be more three-dimensional again, <clears throat> rather than just stitching them to the frame, because I knew from the, the past one that that would just be boring. And I, I came across a bag of these. And can you hold on to that for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, these ones, they are slightly expand. They're quite thick net. They're not like the, the veg sack stuff that I use. <clears throat> and I've, I've got a bag of these. And I'm pretty sure that the friend of mine that gave me the big bag of veg sacks, um, uh, who works for a, a vegetable outlet, <clears throat> she gave me these as well. So I, I sort of asked people, well, does anybody know what these are? And yeah, a few people said, I think they come with garlic in them, either garlic or shallots sort of crammed into them in a big long thing and I, I can see that in my mind's eye, can't you? Did it smell of garlic? No, long long <laughs> since, yeah. But yes, yeah, so I thought, okay, if I stitch the tops to these, I can then attach these to the hat and it will make it a bit more random again and three-dimensional. And I started off thinking, well, I was just going to attach them to the outside, but very quickly I realised but I've got all this inner space to play with as well. So I'm kind of lacing them through the inside so that you've got kind of quite a much more complex arrangement. And again, immediately I started it, stitching them on, I realised the problem is anything you work with that is transparent um, whether it's this stuff or whether it's the actual hat that you can see through, much more interesting visually and much, you know, more complex, mm. which is great. But, big problem, you can always see the back of all your stitching. And so it, it's a nightmare. And I've come across this problem before when I was working. But you know, do you remember I did those three dimensional things out of sheer fabrics? Yes. Yeah. Same problem. Uh, so I've got all these kind of really ugly bits behind the, the stitching. And I thought, well, oh, could, could I put more tops on the back? And that was a bit heavy and clumsy. And then I suddenly realised I, like everybody, or well, most women anyway, to be sexist, um, I've got a button tub full of odd buttons that I've collected over many, many years that you think you're going to find a use for and you kind of mostly don't. Um, so and I got them you have. <laughs> yes, no, I found the use. So I sewed buttons on the back so that you get a slightly a slightly different rhythm of the littler buttons and, and it disguises the fact that you've got the stitching on both sides. So it makes it a bit fiddly, but I think it works really quite well. So I've still got, you can see there's a blank one of these still to put tops on. And then what I did was used just the same three colours of the milk bottle tops, the blue, red and the green. And it was looking a bit boring again once I started to get 
more of them on. And I thought, right, okay, I need more colour injection. So I delved into this carrier bag and there were quite a lot of soft drink bottle tops, the smaller ones um, that we don't drink, so we don't collect those. And so they are being sewn just onto the junctions because I don't think I need too many more of these. I think it's going to get too complicated if I'm fussy if I put too many more of those on. So I'm decorating the junctions with these different coloured tops, um, which immediately I put that yellow on. It made all the world of difference. It just needed that zing. Um, I've got loads and loads of the white ones because we used to have cartons of milk. But uh, yeah, I didn't have any colour. So now I've um, got quite a lot of different possibilities that I can put on there. So what do you think? I think it's wonderful. I think it's an interesting point, isn't it, that with anything that's sculptural, three-dimensional, like the, um, the cosmic ball things that I make out of ceramics, same challenge is to try to make it so that compositionally it's interesting from every possible viewpoint. Yes, that's true. It's, you know, I think that is the real challenge always with anything that's three-dimensional. You, ideally, you don't Sorry, just want that, <coughs> you don't want to <coughs> excuse me to just work from one viewpoint. And I'm, whenever I'm working on anything three-dimensional, I'm constantly rotating it to see or standing back from it and walking around it to see whether it, it's 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 interesting from all viewpoints. And particularly with something that's transparent like this, because you've also then got the added uh, complexity and interest of the positive and negative space that's created as you look through it. And of course, everything that's you can see behind it as well. Yes. You know, what effect is that having on it? I tell you what, that makes it an absolute nightmare to photograph because it yes. has to be against a, a plain colour. Yes. Or you've just got white noise yes. behind it. And you don't really notice it when you're just looking at it like this, but immediately you look at it through a camera, mm. you can barely see it. It's, yeah. it's the ultimate camouflage. Yeah. See, I think something, yeah. something like this, work of art like this, must must be displayed somewhere where it's possible to walk around it. Mm. Yeah, I think for it to just be on a shelf, you would only be getting a fraction of its of its value. Really, it yeah, needs to be true. on a plinth, or it needs to be hung from the ceiling, so that you can walk around it to get yeah. the full get your money's worth. Yeah, and that's an interesting <laughs> point as well because the the two that have gone to America. Um, <clears throat> which are still on display, I think, in Cleveland at the moment, but uh, it's going on to another exhibition after that. I can't remember the details yet, but um, they're hung from the ceiling so that you get this kind of view up the middle. And uh, so one of the things I've been thinking about is ultimately when I get those back and I want to display them all, that's actually quite an interesting way to do it because you get that extra dimension mm -hmm. but it does again mean that all the time I'm making it I'm having to think about what does it look like when you look up in the middle so when I'm sewing these tops onto the junctions I'm trying my best mm -hmm. to make sure that the coloured cotton is disappearing so that mm -hmm. when you look up it you don't see all these ugly kind of knots and you know casting off bits and pieces unfortunately this Bench sack stuff that I do my binding with, it has proved a brilliant material for this because not only is it, it feels really nice and soft, um, but the cotton disappears into the texture of it because it's so, just hold it up there, it's <coughs> so sort of textured and, and fluffy almost that when you stitch and you pull your casting off, it kind of goes into the body of this stuff. And so it's very easy, or at least a lot easier, to hide all that stuff that you really yeah. don't want on show. So I think they will work viewed up the middle, despite mm. all the kind of the engineering that you've got to try and hide. So and of course, the, the final element as well that, that, that adds to all of this is, is the quality of light. Yeah, that's always um, the, the makes problem. A, an incredible difference to the, uh, the visual yeah. effect of this. Yeah, particularly because you can put light through it. Yeah, yeah. directional light. And there'll be quite a lot of reflective surfaces off of the plastic. Yeah. But 
I mean, we've always found that, haven't we, with place exhibition spaces that if you're, mm. unless you're in really kosher galleries, a lot of little galleries, they're not lit as well because it's quite expensive to have all of the wonderful tracking that you need. And so it's often a big problem, isn't it, getting decent lighting. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the reasons it's difficult to just use space. We've got, in Sheffield, we've got quite a lot of potentially good exhibition spaces. There's, there's still empty kind of old warehouses and things in certain parts of the city mm -hmm. and quite interesting buildings, but they don't have gallery lighting. And so we've, we've once or twice, we've been on kind of like foraging missions around the city trying to collect places where we could potentially exhibit work. And that's where it always falls down, isn't it? Yes. The light's yeah. dreadful. So, yes, that's an ongoing problem. But, but eventually, I do intend, when the others come back from America, I do intend to find a way to exhibit these because I think they're going to look good and brilliant all together. Yes. Um, yeah. And, uh, and the ones in, in Cleveland are quite high in the ceiling, the, the display, but I, I'd quite like them to be slightly lower so that people can see them up close a little bit more. Um, but we'll see, that's yes. the future. So anyway, I've gone on for quite a long time, I can see. So poor old John. She does, she does yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I get excited, I'm sorry. <coughs> um, so yes, John, you're painting. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, um, you'll be pleased to know I've only got the one I can talk about today. Um, from what I remember, the last time we talked, um, the the um, the painting I was working on was was of the church, um, and it was very very early stages, and I very quickly realised I wasn't at all happy with it. It just just to kick us off, that was my very first sketch of sort of what I was intending to work from. I had no intentions of it ending up looking exactly like that, but that was my starting point. That's interesting. Which, which I find I need a starting point. Um, it's very, I can't remember if I mentioned it last time, but it's very, very loosely based on a real church um, in a small town or a large village in the Peak District called Hathersage. And it's the church where apparently um, legend has it that little John of Robin Hood fame is buried. Um, I, yeah. I personally have my doubts <laughs> about that. <laughs> but anyway, that's an aside. So, <clears throat> um, the challenge I've been finding with this painting is... That, I'll hold it for yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. you. Can talk about this it. is, it's, I think, as finished as probably it's going to get. And as, as Lynn has uh, indicated, I spent countless hours working on this. Um, you might be looking at it and thinking, good grief, why did you spend hours on that? But anyway, I did. And it's because <clears throat> I get, set myself the challenge of trying to give quite deliberate, multiple um, uh, viewpoints and perspectives in this. So deliberately, <clears throat> so excuse me, my voice, I've, I think because of the lockdown, I'm not used to this. <laughs> I've lost the use of it. Um, <clears throat> it's... I've deliberately exaggerated perspectives and made them go in all sorts of directions, which in effect is as if the the the, the viewer of the of the of the painting is moving to different places. That's what I've, I've been trying to achieve with this. Mm. Um, so I spent a long time working on that and just slightly tweaking and changing things. Um, then, then there was the challenge of, 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 of how realistic to make mm. it, and I was trying to walk. <coughs> oh dear, sorry. Trying to walk the tightrope of it being quite obviously a church, but not a church as well. Not, not, not a church of this world anyway. I wanted it to be bright and cheerful, which I think that's certainly been achieved. Um, I wanted it to have trees in it which uh, is a style of tree I've, I've used in other, in other pictures that I've worked on. Uh, yeah, but, so then I had to work on the relationship between the trees and the building so that they, they enhanced each other but didn't actually get in the way of each other. Didn't there used to be another tree in the front? They did, the yes. Stages? When yeah. I first uh, did it, I think probably on the, the version that uh, I showed you uh, last time, 
there's a large area of trees here and we can actually show you some of the yeah, other stages that I've gone through pictures. with this. Yeah. So we'll put some pictures up for you to have a look yeah, at. Yeah, because I think the windows have changed a great deal as well, haven't they? Yeah, but well, it's a lot of the windows, believe it or not, because, um, again, I wanted them to be clearly windows, but I didn't want them to be too obvious and too realistic. Um, that's why, then, I decided to put, again, after lots of experimentation, lots of variations on it, I decided to put these in it as well, which were just a, a sort of, I suppose, of like a, almost like ghosts of windows. They're yeah. there, you know that there are windows, or in this case a door, but they're there just to make your eye fill in the gaps, really. Yeah, yeah there's a lot to be said, isn't there, for, for doing that, actually giving clues to yes. what, rather Visual. than painting everything yeah. laboriously. Visual clues. Yeah. And down here, this, the, well, obviously is a path, leading to a very abstracted door. I didn't want it to be uh, uh, too obviously a door, but, and then I thought it, looked, it was quite interesting. I, thought, I, felt, I felt that it, at this point, it really needed something to draw your eye into the picture. So that when you first look at it, you've got something that your eye goes straight to and then leads you in to yeah. the picture. So, that was the reasoning behind this section and there. And then I thought it would also work quite well to then actually just follow up with a, a very thin white line up towards the top here and then clearly onwards up to the Do you know what that reminds me of? Um, lightning conductors. Yes. They do that, don't they? Yeah, yes. yeah go all the way up to the top. Yeah. So <coughs> spent countless hours on all of this, sorting this out, and then started to think far more about the colours and how they related and worked with each other. As I said, I wanted it to be bright and cheerful, but at the same time, I think it's very important that the colours complemented each other and worked well together. So it wasn't so much that I kept drastically changing the colours, but what I did do was I kept changing the just the slight intensity of the colours. I think you've painted out some of the colours though. I, I've got memories of you painting great sections out. I did. And yes. then starting again. Same colour palettes, but putting colours in different places. That's right, yes, that's right. Yeah. But, but also the intensity of the colours yeah. as well. Uh, you know, it took me a while to get the green. I always yeah. think the green is quite a challenging colour. Mm -hmm. There's so, obviously, there are countless variations on green. It just, just, you just had a tad more blue or a tad more yellow or, or whatever a tad more white to it and it just completely changes it so i spent a long time working on that and this particular green has got a lot of yellow in it behind it and then i can we just show the colors coming through yeah i'll take it to the camera you stay where yeah. you are and then i <clears throat> so i've created layers the of color and then using wet and dry rubbed back so that some of the colors that are, are behind are brought forward yeah, you so, can see that quite clearly, can't yeah. you? There's there's sort of two colours in a lot of the colours. Yes, because some of the yeah. earlier versions that I did, the colours were very flat, almost graphic-like. So I, I, I didn't really want that. So by creating layers and textures, I then can rub through so that the earlier layers come through partially through to the front mm. to create it's that really effect. It's that effect. Can I ask about the windows? Yeah, sure. Because um, one of the things that makes a church a church is that they have arched windows rather than square windows. Usually, yeah. So what was your decision, th what was your thinking behind making them square mm -hmm. windows rather than church windows? Well, I thought, I did think about that. I mean, for start, absolutely everything in this is straight lines. So I did ah. think that to suddenly yes. put in an arch would perhaps um, grate on the eye a little bit. Okay. Um, and, and also I thought, well, does the arch really matter? What is it that, what signal do you get when you look at a church that tells you that the windows belong to a church? And I think partly it's because they're there to let light in, um, particularly if they've got um, stained glass windows for the light to get through to um, <clears throat> to illuminate the interior of the church. 
So their use is long and relatively narrow. Mm, so that's true. this is just purely uh, an indication of that general shape and the way in which the windows occupy the wall. I mm. really didn't think it needed to be arched in order to do that. Right, so that was more about you trying to mm -hmm. um, make it less realistically a church then? Yes. Yes, I want it to do. I want it to to be a nod to a church. Yeah. So you look at it and think, yeah, clearly that is inspired by a church, mm. but but that's it. I don't expect anybody to look at this and think, oh yeah, that's the church up at uh, Pathersage where Little John's buried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, certainly not from the background because the I, I really love the background. Um, I'll just say that I don't like the foreground, but I really love the kind of strange, as you look into it, there's this weird kind of almost pyramid-like mountainscape behind it. And then these kind of strange, the, the, I love the fact that the, the stripey business is almost suggestive of plough fields to me. Um, but it's, so it's, it's got this, I don't know, it's, it's a very peculiar some place, no place yes. feel about it because that church just, you wouldn't, certainly wouldn't in England expect to see it plonked in the middle of literally nowhere yeah. like that. And, and the nowhere sort of gives you clues of somewhere it might be and then it immediately gives you another clue that says, no, it can't possibly be yeah. that. Um, well, I think that's something you took <laughs> quite well with because at the end of the day, it's, I suppose it's almost like a, it's a fantasy, it's a dream. Yeah, it is like a dream. Yeah, yeah you're right. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it works really nicely. And I know that you said that you're still not sure because I, th I think, that, to be quite honest, I think, personally, if I've been ploughing away at a picture for six weeks, and you're a devil. You get it. You get the bit between your teeth, don't you? And you won't kind of like let it go and and give it time. You you keep on every day at it, which is great. But I think it doesn't give you that distance view that you get when you put it aside. And so I suspect that your kind of issues with it mm. may be to do with not having actually stood away from it for any length of time. I think. Yes. I, You'll I think know that, if you like it or not. I think that's true. I think, I think it just needs to be on the wall now for a while. Yeah, or not on the wall. Yeah. I think it better, in a way, you know, face to the wall for a bit. And then the big reveal in a couple of weeks will tell you whether you like it or not. That's how it works for me anyway. I know when I look at something that I've not looked at for a while, whether it works or whether, oh, God, no, I like that before. But, you know, that bothers me now. So you're trying to tell me, really, you just don't want it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what she's trying to say. Yeah, we'll find some coming yeah. on for it. Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently Leonardo da Vinci took about nine, ten years to paint the Mona Lisa. So if it's, um, <laughs> if it's good enough for good old Leo, it's, uh, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll, by the next time we speak... We'll be able to tell you probably whether John likes his yeah. painted or not. Or, or maybe he's painted a great chunk of it out yeah. and he's off again, you know, we'll see. Well, my next painting, I've just started it. There's not really enough to show you anything of it now, but it's but it's going to be, if it pans out, it's going to be based on an interior viewpoint within, within, within a room rather than an exterior, which is something I've never done before. So um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's interesting. So a whole new challenges. Yeah, I'm not full of admiration for the fact that you you do this constantly. You know, it's not as if you've been painting very long, only since the beginning of the lockdown in March. Um, mm -hmm. And you don't allow yourself to rest on your laurels at all. You, you're constantly thinking, OK, what could I do that's different? What can I try that I haven't tried before? and creating things that make life difficult for yourself. And that is quite admirable, really, because it, <clears throat> it does make it a lot more challenging before you've really got that kind of confidence <clears throat> of having done quite a body of work. So, yeah, good on you. <laughs> I think one, one of the good things about all art forms, really, is that it does give you an opportunity to experiment and try and uh, chant your arm on things with really... No, no consequences. If you know, if, if 
if it failed, saying it's, uh, or, or if it's, or maybe failed is the wrong word, if it turns out <coughs> to be unsatisfactory as far as you're concerned, it's, it's a great way, it's, 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 a, it's a way in life of trying stuff that, 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 that where well, you can take those risks, you know, whereas other things in life, risk can have pretty unpleasant consequences. So, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so if you fancy yeah. a risk, get painting. Well, it's interesting <clears throat> you should say that because I think that in, that <clears throat> is true. That is absolutely true. And that is what painting should be. I, I believe painting should always, you should try and strive for it to be a place of play and experimentation. Um, no matter how experienced you are, mm. once you start repeating yourself, what is the point mm. really? Um, but I, I think that's easier said than done. And I think... So I'm really sorry that I just cut off in the middle of my sentence there. Um, <laughs> when we were recording it, uh, I didn't realise until I just was editing it, but my phone card was full. And so it just cut off mid-sentence, but really lucky that we got pretty much everything that we've got there. I just did just a couple more minutes and saying goodbye. So so anyway, sorry about that. And uh, I'm going to say goodbye now. So uh, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next episode. And, uh, and leave us some comments, you know, let me know what you think. Bye.